Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lonsdale United Methodist Church and Happy New Year. The, the wise men have arrived, have given their gifts to the baby Jesus. We have welcomed Epiphany. January the 17th, food pantry prep day begins at 2 p.m. The following day, the distribution will be from 1 to 3. Let us read responsively, please. Give the king your justice, O God. And your, your righteousness to the royal son. May he judge your people with righteousness. And, and your poor with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. 
May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound till the moon be no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him. All nations serve him. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy. And saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence he redeems their life and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live, may gold of Sheba be given to him, may prayer be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all the day. May there be abundance of grain in the land, may it wave on the tops of the mountains, may its fruit be like Lebanon. And may they blossom forth in the cities like the grass on the field. May his name endure forever, his fame continue as long as the sun. May people bless themselves by him. All nations call him blessed. Thank you. 
I was struck as we were reading the psalm about how the arrangers of our Psalter um, like to play tricks on us from time to time. <laughs> Sometimes we're going to respond every two lines, sometimes every four, sometimes just one. I think that someone at the um, publishing house is going to make sure that congregations stay on their toes. <laughs> at this time in the service, we bring our joys, our concerns, our requests, and our praises to the Lord. And so I'd like to invite you now, if you have something you'd like to celebrate, happy birthday to Louise. Denise. Denise. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say something. I have been researching hearing aids, and I'm beginning to think that I need to get serious about it. Happy birthday, Denise. I am so sorry I heard Louise. Yes, happy birthday, Hi, Denise. <laughs> really wonderful to celebrate your birthday, and we're grateful for all that you do and for all the joy that you bring to so many of us. Praise God. God is good. All the time. Kind of got overlooked. I guess if your birthday is not mentioned in church, it's not official. Or you can just smooth right on by it. <laughs> Amy, Amy's birthday is uh, the night. So we had to go all the way to Florence, Alabama to find her. What we did down there. <laughs> brought her back. And we were thinking about what kind of name, what we were going to name her. Mike was in the back seat. He said, I don't care what you call her. I'm going to call her Amy. So. <laughs> well, praise God. We're, we're so uh, grateful for your life and your, and your ministry and your presence among us. And uh, all, all of, the, all of the, the, the maze in a row here. <laughs> praise God and happy birthday once again. Yes, well, it's great to have you all with us. Praise God. Great to have you back, Cody. Yes, well, it's great to have you all with us. Praise God. <laughs> Moving on to prayer concerns. If you have something you'd like for us to lift up together in prayer this morning, please. We continue in prayer for Buddy, who's now back in the hospital with additional complications, including tuberculosis. So we pray for God's healing for Buddy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we pray for Gina. We pray for God's healing for her um, as she undergoes treatment for stage four cancer. We pray for God to uh, give her strength as she undergoes treatment, and we pray for um, her family and all of her um, loved ones who are, I'm sure, very anxious in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we commend to God's loving care and mercy, Chester, and we pray for the family and friends who mourn this loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we look forward to the beginning of this treatment plan, we pray for strength for you as, as you um, undergo whatever the therapies may entail. We pray for, um, for peace. We pray for wisdom for the doctors as they devise the plan and for the technicians as they carry it out. We pray for wisdom and we pray for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <sighs> what, a, what a terrible crisis in general we have with mental health for young people. And, um, and hearing about her struggle is heartbreaking. So we pray for Sophia um, as she undergoes additional treatment. We pray for God's Holy Spirit to give her peace, to help bring her calm and courage. And we pray for those who are treating her that they would come up with the right plan to help her regain her function and be able to rejoin her family. We pray for her family as they struggle with the I'm sure incredible uh, deep sense of grief and anxiety, concern that goes along with this. We pray for Sophia and her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we pray for John, who's been admitted to the hospital um, for treatment. We pray for healing for him, and we pray especially for Pam, his wife, who is struggling with this situation, experiencing, I'm sure, um, a whole gamut of emotions. And so we just pray for God's healing Holy Spirit to be present, to bring her peace, and to ease her pain and her anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to God's loving care and mercy Nathan. This past Wednesday, he passed away. So we commend him to the loving care and mercy of God and pray for his mother, Sharon, who has lost all three of her sons and her husband within the past six years. So we pray for, for her as she endures um, 
what is frankly unendurable. And we pray for God to give her a special blessing of peace and strength in this difficult time as she mourns yet another loss. And we pray for all of the rest of the family, Nathan's family and friends, who are grieving at his passing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for Grace, who uh, Tennessee Avenue Baptist, she's one of our friends here in the neighborhood. And so we pray for Grace, who suffered a stroke this past week, and pray for God's healing for her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to God's loving care and mercy, Ray, who unexpectedly passed away this past week. And it's actually his birthday today. And so we commend him to God's loving mercy and care and pray for Jean, his wife, Jean, for his family and also for his friends that, that mourn and grieve this loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful God, you have heard the prayers of your people gathered here. We lift them in confidence in the name of Jesus, trusting in you and your goodwill for us and for all people. We ask that you would hear our prayers and grant our requests. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Nice to see you all. Did you have a happy new year? Yeah. I did. Thank you. I was in bed by 10 o'clock. <laughs> I didn't ring in the new year one bit. I think I might have woken up right at, right at midnight and said, woo, and gone back to sleep. <laughs> But yeah, it was fun. It's always fun to see the turning of a year, isn't it? And you think about all of what's going to come next in this coming year. You start to think about the future, and that's kind of fun, right? Well, today, the first Sunday of the new year, is also a very special Sunday in the church's calendar. Today is called Epiphany Sunday. Now, that's a pretty big word. Epiphany is a word that means um, revelation. And in fact, sometimes you'll hear people use that word when they say they've discovered something. They say, I had an epiphany last night. I really like peanut butter. A revelation. And the reason why we call it epiphany and connect it to the visit that the wise men have when they come and bring Jesus their gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we connect it to that because Jesus is revealed to the whole world. And those wise men that come to visit Jesus in, the, in Bethlehem, they come as sort of representatives of the whole world, not just the people in a small area. That's not who Jesus came for. Jesus came for the people in Bethlehem and the people in Judea and the people in all of the world. And so the wise men come from very far away representing that Jesus is born to save everyone, the whole world. Now, we traditionally think of there being how many wise men? How many wise men do we usually say there are? Do you remember that? Who said three? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You get it. <laughs> you get the prize. Three wise men. Now, we don't really know if it was three or 12 or 25 or 100. We don't know. But we traditionally think of them as three. And did you know that we also gave them names? Anyone know the names of the wise men? Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. Yeah, those are, those are the names of the three wise men that we, that we give them. And they, those are kind of interesting names, aren't they? They kind of sound exotic. That's because they come from far away. And they come from far away to Bethlehem because they saw a star. And they wanted to come and see who this newborn king that the star represented. They wanted to see who this would be. And they came all the way to Bethlehem and all the way to this little stable, this little manger, and they brought gifts for Jesus. And that's a good lesson for us because we can always be on the lookout for Jesus and be ready to give Jesus our gifts and to worship Jesus. Because Jesus didn't just come for some people. He didn't just come to save a few people. He didn't just come to save a very select group of people. Jesus came to save everyone, and that includes us and everyone in the whole world. Jesus is the light of the world. And so that is a reason for us to worship Jesus and to give thanks to God that Jesus has come to save us and the whole world. Do you have questions about that? Yes. God and Jesus help everyone if they get hurt or they, or, or they get beaten. Yeah, God and Jesus help everyone. That's right. Yeah, very good, Susanna. Very good. Yeah, God, God sent Jesus to be the helper and the savior of everybody. Everybody. Yeah. 
I really like that. It's so nice to know that Jesus came for everybody. It also helps me remember that I need to love everybody too, don't I? Yeah, if God loves everybody, I probably need to love everybody as well. Yeah, that's a good lesson to learn. All right. Any other questions? Okay, can I pray for you? Wait, are you going back to school this week? You go back tomorrow? Tomorrow. Wow, that's soon. Okay. Are you excited? No. <laughs> you would like a little bit more vacation? I agree. Yeah, I think you deserve it. Tell your teacher you deserve more vacation. See how that goes. <laughs> All right, I'll pray for you and bless and give you a blessing for as you go back to school, okay? okay. All right. Almighty and everlasting God, pour out your blessing upon these young people. As they return to school in the coming week, we pray, Lord, that you would give them minds that are uh, ready for learning, that are just ready to soak up knowledge, that they would be able to, uh, to understand their lessons, that they would have success with all of their studies and their homework. We pray that you would give them peace from any anxiety they're experiencing as going back to school. We also pray, Lord, that you would give them the joy and the hope that comes from the knowledge that you love them and that you are with them and that you are ready and able to help them in everything they do through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, God bless you guys. Good to see you today. Good luck with school tomorrow. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things, by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, 
according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Our second reading is Matthew chapter 2, and it's verses 1 through 12. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophet. And though Bethlehem in the land of Judea art not the least among the princes of Judea, for our of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were in the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I'm fond of saying, and I'm sure you've heard me say many, many times, that the key to Christian joy, to the peace and the joy and the, and the, um, the contentment that we often see in seasoned Christians, that it comes from staying focused on Jesus. And I'm always very careful to emphasize in my preaching that it's God in Jesus Christ who does the work of our salvation and that we are the recipients of that gift of salvation by God's grace. And so I'm very, very much an emphasizer of grace. I believe in salvation being something that's given to us, not something that we earn. That our relationship with God is God graciously embracing us, not us making ourselves good enough for God. Salvation, our relationship with God, in fact, our destiny as human beings is wrapped up in God moving toward us, in God's gracious move toward us. Not because we get ourselves, you know, cleaned up and looking, you know, really nice and attractive to God, but because God loves us as we are and moves toward us where we are. We see that illustrated very vividly in the entirety of the Christmas story, that God moves toward humankind by becoming himself human in the person of Jesus Christ and being born not in the halls of power. He's not born in downtown Rome or in Jerusalem. He's born to a young, unwed girl from the middle of nowhere in Nazareth, and the birth takes place in an even middler of nowhere place called Bethlehem, in not a nice, comfortable room, but in a barn, in a stable, He's laid in a manger, not a crib. All of these things emphasize to us that God moves toward us where we are, even in the most undesirable situations. It doesn't matter to God how clean <laughs> and pretty and spruced up everything is. God moves toward us where we are. And that's such an important 
part of our understanding of who God is. It really, for us, uh, puts into perspective how gracious and loving and merciful God is. And I hope that you feel as I do that there is a great deal of comfort in that message because it's not about what I do. It's not about how I am uh, you know, making myself righteous and making myself good enough for God, but it's about God coming and lifting me up and pulling me close no matter where I am, no matter what my situation might be. And so that's comforting. But I always also say, and the key to to this Christian life, the key to, to experiencing all of the joy and the benefit of this wonderful salvation is to keep ourselves focused on Jesus. And you might very rightly ask yourselves, okay, that's great, how? Actually, you wouldn't ask yourself that, you might ask me that. (laughs) You might say, that's all well and good, uh, Timothy, but how am I supposed to stay focused on Jesus? And I'm glad you asked, because we're going to talk about that for a few moments this morning. This is the first Sunday of a new year. First Sunday of the new year almost always is Epiphany Sunday, and I find that to be a really great opportunity to talk for a few moments about how we can stay focused on on Jesus. I think that far too often we put too heavy of a burden on ourselves when it comes to our Christian life. I know for myself anyway, I can only really speak from my own experience, but maybe this will resonate with you too, that far too often I have allowed sort of a quote unquote works mentality to creep into my Christian life. And what I mean by that is that I have put it, I put a burden upon myself to do the Christian life perfectly (laughs) so that I can check my box and say that I've done my Christian life thing for today. And oftentimes that also includes me sort of checking in on myself and and asking, did I feel anything? Did I I feel uh, something good about what I did or or did did I feel an emotional pull in, in, in that worship service or in this or that. And, and I think it's a very common way for us to put burdens on ourselves. I think we put burdens on ourselves in two ways. Either one, we burden ourselves to do it perfectly, or two, we burden ourselves to feel it deeply. Does anyone ever, re- does that resonate with anyone? Do you ever get that feeling? Like be- between those two sort of extremes, you can really get caught in a place where you just kind of get stuck and you don't do anything, right? You're paralyzed. Because if I'm not going to feel it and I'm not going to do it right, then what's the point of doing it? And I often hear that as a pastor uh, kind of expressed to me um, in terms of, well, I just feel like I'm going through the motions. And this is my first word of encouragement for today. I am a huge advocate and fan of going through the motions. I really am. In fact, going through the motions for me has sometimes been the only way that I stay connected to Jesus. The motions are actually there for a reason. (laughs) And going through them can sometimes be the very thing that gets us through that period when we don't feel anything about our faith. But if we stay with the motions, oftentimes that is exactly how we stay connected to Jesus. The other thing about going through the motions, however, and I hear this too, is I don't think I'm doing it right. If I don't do the motions right, did it work? (laughs) And that's another way that we put a burden on ourselves. That's that's, That's a concern that we have, that we feel like we have to perform our faith either to our own satisfaction or to someone else's satisfaction. And I think that there's a lesson in the visitation of the Magi for us when it comes to those ways that we end up getting stuck. You see, the Magi didn't just look up one day and see a star and say, oh, we should follow that star, (laughs) right? They understood that it had significance. And the reason they understood that it had significance is because they had devoted their life to study. 
The Magi knew what the star in the east meant because they had spent their lives in diligently studying and seeking to understand what the signs of a new king would be. Now, they were pagan in their religion or, or um, you know, certainly not Jewish in their, in their understanding. However, they had studied not only their own religious texts, but they've studied other religious texts. And they, because of their diligent study, recognized something in the, in the sky that led them on their journey. And what's interesting about that is, is they, they kind of um, completely epitomize that, um, that individual that Paul kind of talks about in his sermon in Acts when he's at Mars Hill. And he says that God is all around us and that some of us, even though we're in the dark and blind, we're reaching out and maybe in our reaching we might even grasp hold of God. And the, the wise men really sort of exemplify that. They're a great illustration of that. They, they don't know what they're looking for, but because of their study, they are able to recognize something about the star that for them becomes life-changing. There's two things about this story of the Magi that stick out to me. One is that they had spent their lives studying something they didn't understand and, and, and didn't necessarily have any hope of understanding. And they also had enough discernment to know the leading of the Spirit, even if they didn't understand who the Spirit is. There's something there for us. We can devote ourselves to studying, if you'll pardon that terminology, something that we may never fully understand and that the mystery of God. And what we will discover, I think, if we devote ourselves with diligence to pursuing the mystery is that we develop discernment so that we begin to understand when the Spirit is leading us, even if we don't fully understand where the Spirit is leading us to, or what the Spirit might have us to do. And to me, there's just so much comfort in that, because, because what it means is I don't have to have it all figured out to start my journey. You know, the wise men certainly didn't know where they were going to end up when they started following the star. They just, in faith, faith in something they didn't fully understand, gassed up the camels, and headed east, or west, pardon me, headed from the east to the west. We can, even if we don't fully understand the mystery, and we never will, even if we don't fully understand how we should be pursuing the mystery, and we probably never will, we can nonetheless encounter the mystery that is the holy and triune God and pursue the mystery. And in that pursuit, we will undoubtedly find the blessing of the presence of Jesus in our lives. So what are some things that we can do? What are some motions we can go through that can help us to stay diligent in our pursuit of this mystery that we call God? I'm not here to be prescriptive this morning. I'm going to tell you some practices and some things that work for me or work for others, and they may not work for you, and that's okay. But it's important for us to recognize that it's about simply the doing, not the perfection. And God isn't cruel, okay? God doesn't sort of dangle God's self out here and says, okay, figure out how to find me. God has given us gifts in this great treasure house we call the church. And these gifts are there for us to use to pursue the mystery and to experience the presence of Jesus in our lives. And so there are a few things that, that I'm going to share with you very briefly um, 
that, um, that, you can, that you can maybe incorporate into your year this year that you may find useful in this pursuit of the mystery. One is on the back of your bulletin, the guide to daily prayer. We put that together every week as a way for you to spend just a few minutes a day in Bible study, Bible reading, and prayer. And it's laid out in a very, very simple manner so that you can go through it in 10 or 15 minutes in the morning or evening. And it gives you everything you need to have a simple devotional moment that you don't have to devise and invent on your own. I would also encourage you to make liberal use of things like the Lord's Prayer or the Glory Be. They're the Glory Be is printed on the back of the bulletin as part of that guide to daily prayer. These are, the Lord's Prayer is as old as Jesus and the disciples, right? This is the first prayer that Jesus gave us as a model of prayer and as a way to address God. And when we don't know how to pray, which is, by the way, exactly why we have the Lord's Prayer, because the disciples said to Jesus, we don't know how to pray, Jesus. Can you teach us? When we don't know how to pray or what we should pray for, the Lord's Prayer is there for us to use. Sure, it's a motion we can be going through, and I know that sometimes it can feel like we're just reciting words, but it's a way for us to continue our connection to Jesus in those moments when it feels like we're disconnected. The same with the Glory Be, the sometimes called the lesser doxology. It's a very brief prayer of praise to God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, world without end. Amen. It's just a very simple prayer, but it's a way to stay connected in worship to God when we sometimes don't know how or what to pray. Some people use objects. They'll hold a cross as a way to focus their time of prayer. Some people use prayer beads. That's more often considered a Roman Catholic thing, but many people use prayer beads just as a way to fiddle <laughs> and to, to keep themselves focused as they're praying. And again, none of these things are prescriptions. They're just ideas. If you're having trouble with focusing your prayer time, these are ways that you might try to help stay focused and connected. And of course, the Bible is our ultimate worship resource. And simply spending some time in the Psalms can be a way for us to stay connected to God when we don't know how or what to pray on our own. Every day in the Guide to Daily Prayer, there's a single psalm that you can read, but I would encourage you also to spend some time reading through others of the psalms throughout your week and your month and your year. The psalms are the prayer book of the ancient Jewish faith, the modern Jewish faith, and the church. It's a prayer book that's been around for 3,000 years. It's full of hymns and prayers, and it encompasses almost every human emotion we can imagine. And so these are ways that you can experience God's presence and pursue God's presence and pursue a relationship with God that aren't about checking off boxes and aren't about whether or not you feel it, but are simply about taking the step every day to follow the star a little bit more closely and to let the Spirit lead you a little bit further. And I promise you that the gift of the presence of Jesus is there. And we won't always understand it. We won't always feel it. We won't always do it right. But God is gracious and not cruel. And so God is here to help us on our journey, not to judge us for how well we're running the race. And in fact, in just a moment, we're going to come to the Lord's table and experience another one of the ways that God gives us to assure us of God's presence in our lives and God's love and mercy for us. In simple gifts of bread and wine, God gives us God's life and assures us that we are part of who God is and what God is doing in the world. And so as we come to the Lord's table, let's take a moment to call to mind those ways that we have failed to love God or love our neighbors. Let's call to mind our sins, and I'll invite you to a few moments of silent confession, and then we'll pray together a prayer of confession.
If you would repeat after me, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into everlasting life. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is right, good, and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. In the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. He was visited by wise men from the east who brought their gifts and laid them at the infant Jesus' feet. Receive our gifts, Lord. Receive our gifts and multiply them. And give us back that loving, gracious gift of your presence. By the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, Father, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, in obedience to Christ's command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we eagerly await his coming in glory. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Savior. And sanctify us also that we might, as we receive this holy sacrament, be filled with all your grace and heavenly benediction. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us now boldly pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. and Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All is prepared. Come, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The body of Christ.
Christ given for you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Let us pray. Most merciful God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go out into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand to receive the benediction. Remember, it's not about perfection. It's not even about what we feel. It's about the reality that Jesus loves us and wants a relationship with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.